Um, so I was raped by my father. And it's so unfortunate that at such a young age you can be stripped of so much. This is a person that is around children. Me forgiving him actually opened up so many doors for me. My father took away my innocence. Mm, that is the title of our young author who is in studio with us today. Not a stranger to the no. channel. Very brave, courageous young woman you are. Zezo, <laughs> welcome so back. Much. Thank you. It's good to be I'm back. so happy to see you glowing, looking great. <laughs> I believe so care. much has happened since your episode premiered. Um, a lot of shock across our audiences of an event that happened when you were very young. I quickly want you to take us through that again just as like a background for our audiences to know exactly what happened and what brings you here on I've Been Through The Most podcast. Right. Thank you so much. Um, so I was raped by my father um, from the age of seven to the age of 13 years and I basically survived it and I wrote a book about it um, in wanting to help others who've been through the same thing um, to to get the bravery from the book you know and the courage mm. so that was it. Also you mentioned something uh, in the previous episode that really just left me so sad maybe because I'm a mother now mm -hmm. and um, at the age of 13 you then fell pregnant with your father's child so at that time that I was pregnant I didn't know that I was and I didn't even know what pregnancy was because this happened I was 13 in 2007 and ideally for black parents it wasn't ideal for them to sit you down and tell you that only thing that I was told the previous year when I started my period was that no boy is allowed to touch you and no one further explained as to why and I remember um, I started my period I went and I told my, my my boarding master who was with us and I told her that I started my period and she was like no boy is allowed to touch you you know and the following day at school, we were being sit in groups um, and I cried. I was hysterical. I was like, no, I don't want to, I'm not allowed to be touched by boys because this happened to me. And even our teachers then were like, no, you will we'll teach you about that next year. Now it's not, it's not in this curriculum. So when I felt pregnant, I was like, oh, okay, um, what is supposed to happen now? You know, I didn't even know what it was. So it was when my mom had to explain to me how a person gets pregnant and then everything just connected. How did you know you're, you're pregnant? Because of course, mm. at that point, of course, you didn't know you're pregnant. Mm. What are some yeah. of the changes that you immediately noticed? What happened to you? Did you get morning sickness? Mm. So I, I, I believe that it was it was time that God wanted it to come out because I just randomly got sick at school, a stomach, mm. a stomach ache, and then I was taken to the hospital. And then randomly the doctor was like, okay, let's just do a pregnancy test to just see what is going on. And it came out positive. Even then I was mm. like, oh, okay. What does that mean? Like, what I know is a person when they're positive, it's either they're HIV positive, but now pregnancy positive. Like, I didn't what even understand what yeah. does that mean, you know? And I was taken back home, and the, the doctor was like, no, she's not sick, she's pregnant. You know, I was taken back home and was like, okay. But now when I remember, now that I'm older, I, I, I do remember the signs. I, I remember I was vomiting a lot after school. I think that was the morning sickness, but because I didn't know as a child then, I couldn't really see that there was a problem mm. so a lot of questions that we received during the episode was for all these years that your father is raping you mm -hmm. how did your mother or mm. any other family member notice that there's something strange happening here when were these events happening all right so in 2001 my father asked that i go live with him and then i went to live with him and then he started this whole thing but my mom was she she came to visit me like she's a teacher so she came to visit me visit me every 20th so and then she could see that there is something wrong because i've uh, i'm thin and you know like I'm not, I'm not talking and she'd, she'd be asking, how are you? I'd be like, no, I'm fine, you know. And then she decided that she's taking me away the following year. Mm -hmm. And so um, she took me, but on certain weekends, she would, my dad would call and ask that I come and visit. And if he would get a chance, he would do it. And then if he did not, he, he couldn't, you know. So it, 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 that's how it happened. That is how. And I think I 
I grew into hiding myself, you know, from the pain because even when he did it, obviously I would be in pain, but I was not allowed to go and play. And so if mm. I was, I, I did get a chance to go and play, I would sit by the curb and not join the others because mm. I'm in pain. So I, I, I got used to the pain and I had ways of hiding it, you know. And I just think maybe really God wanted it to be out at a certain time so it was not time then for even my mom to be able to see it or everyone else to be able to see it i think also the difficult thing is vocalizing something you don't know yeah what like you say she didn't understand what is happening so to even vocalize it i think to your mother was was a strange thing like what are you gonna say? Up, you, and, you, know? you know, I I I I vindicated myself. I was like, why are you so weak? Because mm. I saw other girls playing, and they were jumping. You know, happy. And I was like, you are also going through the same thing, but you are able to play. You know, I'll be like, mm. ah, I wanted to play that game, but I couldn't. My hips were not sure. allowing me because you know the games that we used to play. Mm. Um, those swim or whatever you, you have know those places you have to jump yes so, and sure. i couldn't you know and i would be like at home when i get back late in the afternoon like why like i wanted to beat who and who but mm. i couldn't because mm. i'm in pain and they are also going through the same thing why can't i you know so i thought every girl in my age group was going, going through, through the, the same, same thing. thing do you remember how everything started yes and yes. how did that happen how did you feel? What was the conversation like? What did he say to you? Because I believe it was a manipulation process, Absolutely. obviously, because you have to deal with the person psychologically mm -hmm. first, and then you know you have them. All right. So it was, you know, I just feel that at that time, I don't know, like it was just so cruel how it happened. Because they, um, when I got there, he was living with my stepmother, and this day they had a huge fight. And... Mm everything was just done out of anger you know there was no coercing me into doing this he just put me on top of him and then rubber you know it was no it was no thing of trying to make me feel some type of way oh listen or whatever it just it just happened you know it was just out of anger you know where was the lady the, she the... was not there because after the fight she took her things and her baby and she left so it was only me and him who were left in the house because that was a question I wanted to ask earlier, actually. I'm like, did your father not have a partner in his life? For him to have so much time and so many years to, you know, be taking advantage of you. Like, why your own daughter? Can't you just get a partner? No, you know? he did. He did. And I remember he's a t he was a teacher. And, and there were just so many schoolgirls coming in and out the house, sleeping mm. over and all of that. So... It was just his thing, basically. It was just his thing because he did have a partner. He was married. I knew I, he was married to two people when I was in his life, you know. So I knew the women in his life and I knew these girls in uniforms coming in and out. So it was just, and honestly, I would be like, oh, I'm so happy tonight. It's someone else, you know. Sure. I would have that feeling when a, when a school girl comes in, like, oh, I'm so happy. But what do you mean school, school girl? Like he dated and slept with schoolgirls while he was married, so clearly he had a problem. Yeah. So yeah. So I would be like, I would be so excited when I see a schoolgirl coming in at like mm. five eight p.m. I know that she's sleeping over. I'm like, whoo, okay, tonight I'm sleeping alone. You know, nothing is happening. I'm not gonna be in pain tomorrow. This is a school teacher. Let us not even mm. like <laughs> play around with that. This is a person that is around children. Was your school teacher in a primary school? Primary school. And I remember um, I was told that the school, uh, there was a school that I wanted to go speak to in my rural areas. Um, and apparently he taught there. And I was like, no, I just want to go speak to the school children there. And I was told that the, that was the very same reason he left the school. And we're like, how oh, guys? And it was even before he asked me to go and live with him. And I was like, why didn't you report this before, mm. you know, before me, you know? And it just ended there. Well, one of the victories to your story uh, for me is, is that your father eventually got arrested, right? So where is he now? Is he still in prison? How's your relationship with your father to date? All right. So he, he got out of prison last year. 
And I think that's when things, okay, so it was in, I was here 2019, 2020, and um, apparently he was then eligible for parole. Ne? So I was asked now, because there are things that in prison that they do, some victim offender dialogues that I have to attend. So we started doing that. And I think that that was when everything went even downhill for me now personally, because um, even after so many years, this person has done time but still no remorse you know like i couldn't understand that part you know for my part so yeah but he's he, he went he got out last year last year how many years was he in prison for i think since 2015 so it wasn't long i think he was so was he convicted just for your case or was he just convicted for my for case all the underage girls that yeah, he was just, just for so my case. if that's because they didn't report yeah, it i'm guessing they didn't Mm. let's go back to when you say everything went downhill from there because I know he, you said he was not remorseful which obviously just aggravates you mm -hmm. and you feel the pain like it's, it's true, almost yeah. like someone is stabbing mm -hmm. you on mm -hmm. an existing mm -hmm. wound because if he came out and he was like what I did to you was wrong what I did to you was unfair mm -hmm. and for me don't you qualify for parole when they can see that you're remorseful and that you have been rehabilitated mm -hmm. but what happened with the case? How did you land up here? Yeah, because what, what, what would happen eh, when, when we are there at the boardroom mm -hmm. with the officials, the social workers, like he was so remorseful. I'm so sorry. I did do this and I'm sorry for ruining your life. But now when I step out of those walls and mm -hmm. it's just he changes completely. He's a different man. Back to the man that I already know, the arrogant man that I know. So, and that, and then I just couldn't understand, you know, I just couldn't understand. And, um, I was even, his family now was bashing me for writing a book. I mean, I thought you had forgiven him, you know, now you're so, you're still angry. You know, there was just a lot going on. And I was like, you know what? I need to take a break from everything, you know, and just, cause I thought I knew that, okay, I was healed. I had forgiven him. But now when people just start proging at you and mm. just saying things, you know, it just takes you back and you're like, guys, like I've done my part. Why can't you play your part? You know? And it's yeah. almost like you have to justify the yeah, pain that you're feeling. Exactly. You have to justify everything. And it's not just from wrong. his yeah, family. That it's, now. Wrong. Mm. it's not just from his family and just people who don't even know me, like random strangers, like, no, you lied. There's no way that you wouldn't know. You know, it's like your our social media is not for me, you know, because people But your father did admit. Exactly. And for me I think it's one of the victories because he could have gone and still denied even when you've reported the case, mm -hmm. even he could have gone. So for me, it's like, thank God. Mm -hmm. He actually did say, I did do this to her because it's so painful for me that there are young girls out there who are not believed when they mm -hmm. tell their story. And that can be a lifetime trauma for you because you start thinking, is mm -hmm. it me or did this really happen? Because if the person keeps denying and everybody else does not believe you, you, you that start is trauma it, on yeah. the face. Now you're like, is my story true? Like, like, I was, <laughs> did this really happen? Yeah, I was dreaming. Did, did it really happen? Yes. Like, mm -hmm. And that's like, the reality no, for a lot of girls out there. Mm -hmm. Even their own parents don't believe them. And I commend your mother for believing you yeah. and really running with the story. Like, okay, you know what? We are going to the police. We are reporting this. This is wrong. And I think that for me is something that family members should be doing mm -hmm. and not saying, are you sure this happened? Are you still scared that he might do something to you? Mm -hmm. Because if he doesn't show remorse to you, it means that he doesn't think what he did is wrong mm -hmm. and he might still feel some sort of ownership or power. Um, you know, mm -hmm. like how is it knowing that tomorrow you might bump into this person who yeah. stole and has taken away your innocence? It was the worst. I remember, um, so he stays at Umtata and I was there to visit my, my sister in Umtata. And on that, it was a morning that I received a, a call that said that he's out. And mm. remember, I'm in the same town as him. So it's like, I'm even scared to go and buy bread, you know, because... Mm. I might just bump into this guy and I don't know what he's capable of doing, you know. So because now I feel like me coming out to the story is a threat to them, you know, and to him personally. So you you just don't know. You just don't know. And being not being informed, you know, by the 
correctional, correctional services, services yeah. that okay now tomorrow because I knew that mm. he was gonna come out anytime but just to call me and say listen tomorrow this person is coming out so be prepared you know because really I, I don't know I really don't know I want to talk about forgiveness right mm -hmm. which is a theme that you know reoccurred in your episode when I watched it and I think it's still unbelievable to people because mm. they can't put the two together yeah. like your father rapes you and then there's forgiveness you know talk us through that journey of forgiveness and just because you've forgiven somebody doesn't take away what they've done yeah. and how it mm. affected you and I think that's where the other family members from his side are missing yeah. mm. that just because I've forgiven this person doesn't <laughs> mean mm. I can't talk about my story exactly. doesn't mean I can't write about it doesn't because there are still those young girls who have not reported at the case mm -hmm. they are dealing with this and for the mere fact that you're sharing your story it's healing to a lot of people right so mm. forgiveness forgiveness so um your forgiveness was very hard it was very very hard and i learned it the hard way you know mm. um what was funny about it was that things were happening to me like I was the one getting sick. I was the one, you know, getting all the bashing from people and all of that. But then the day that I decided, I was like, no, I am over this. And I learned what forgiveness is, that it's not about the other person, but it's about you, you know. And once I got to learn that concept and I was like, it works, you know, like a whole lot of weight is lifted off your shoulders and you're like, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to be angry. It's not worth it because now my peers are moving on. I'm supposed to be in varsity now. I'm not because I'm depressed and all of this because of this person. And when I hadn't forgiven my father, I couldn't go to court cases. So the court couldn't proceed. Hmm. I couldn't do a lot of things, you know, regarding the case because... I was sick, you know, but then the day I decided, no, listen, I'm going to go take a stand and I'm going to go tell my story. And then I don't care what happens after because I'm now letting go of everything. That was when it was able to be proceeded. He was arrested and everything started to come back to me. I'm like, oh, OK, I can actually write a book about this. I decided to do this and this and this and that. And that's how like my life of forgiveness happened. So me forgiving him actually opened up so many doors for me. I'm so happy for you because yeah. I think that people are often embarrassed mm -hmm. with crises that happen to them or devastating moments that happen to them. They would keep it to themselves until they die. It's very few people who will come out and say this happened to me. And every time you have to reshare your story, it's almost like you're reliving all those moments. But you have become so selfless that you actually understand that it's not just about you anymore. It's about each and every person who needs courage out there. I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to take a paper and I'm going to write this down. And I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to go to interviews and I'm going to fight, you know, for my freedom, for my my healing yeah. for my forgiveness so big ups to you Thank i you. don't know what pushes you but i'm so glad that there are people out here like you who are really so bold and brave and i wish you the best of success in your future and it's so unfortunate that at such a young age you can be stripped of so much i don't think people understand the intensity oh, of that the devastation of that the trauma that comes with that some people can literally never heal from that how are you even pregnant when you don't even know what pregnancy is how do you do it over and over again for over five years and you're my father what are the conversations that you're having with me that means that not only have you been stripped from your childhood you've also been stripped from having a father mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, I think that's the saddest part for me mm -hmm. because how do I look at you and see a father and not see somebody that is my perpetrator do you know what I mean yeah. I think that's a very difficult transition to do but when you look at him what do you see <sighs> when I look at him now I like, I, I can't even describe how I feel, but I know for a fact that he's not allowed in my life and I don't want him having any say. Um, the power that he had, I have stripped it off of him, you know. He is no longer the person that he was to me, you know, because of how he is doing things. I have forgiven him. I do respect him as my father, but... Everything else that comes with that territory, it does not exist anymore.
and you didn't take that away. He took it away yeah. himself. I mean, he took away the privilege from, mm-hmm. from being your father. And I'm glad that, you know, we have God that exists that becomes the father to the yeah. fatherless and really just made you this powerful and strong woman that you are today. Well done for writing the book. I think it's only fair that, you know, we give away the book as well, yes. you know, to viewers because I know this is part of healing for somebody um, because you putting that pen on paper for me was, is, 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 is bigger than us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to go to places where you can't even go with Mm -hmm. your own feet, but the book can get there. So I think we're going to give away a book definitely in this episode. Or we're going to give away books. We're not going to give away one. (laughs) But wait, I need to know. So where are you now? (laughs) Relationships? You know, have you have you fallen in love? Have you found? <laughs> has the whole like system of you know what love means changed for you? Mm-hmm. It it has changed. It has definitely changed. You know, when I when I when I was like, okay, God, I'm ready now to date, and I feel like I'm okay. You know, with everything, I I really just prayed. Like you know, I don't want someone who's gonna remind me every single day that because you are so angry it's because of this and this i can just angry i can just become angry because i'm angry you know so i and god did give me that person yay (laughs) (laughs) i'm very very happy like honestly i'm very happy in my relationship guy respects me he loves me as Mm. i deserve to be loved and i used to have a thing where i'd say that i'd never allow my husband to change my babies you know that i wouldn't feel safe but i'm like with this guy you can do whatever you want like i can leave you with my baby girl like I don't mind because God has has shown me that there's a chance for everything else you know there's you need to give everything else a second chance you know you need to give me as God and understand that I don't make all men to be like your father you know mm-hmm. like there are men who are respectable who do things the way that they should do so and I and I feel that he is showing me that me, good men exist in the man mm. that I have now in my life. Yeah, in the relationship yes. with your mom, how's that now? And how was it for her, for you to share your story? Because I know it's not easy mm. because yeah. you're in the public, so it's easy to have something that we can share. Mm. But the minute it goes out there, that yeah. means that it's not three opinions yeah. anymore. There's like a hundred opinions. Now it's your neighbors thousands. watch. Now your neighbors <laughs> know. And now, you know, you're in the grocery shop and somebody knows about it. Mm. How was that for your mom? Because I believe as a mom, you feel like, where was I? Yeah. I should have yeah. protected you. I'm the one who's supposed to make sure that nothing like that ever happens mm. to my child. Mm. So how's your relationship now? And also, how did, did you never, ever blame your mom mm. for everything that happened to you? All right. So I definitely did blame her. Um, in fact, my whole family, because I grew up in a huge family. And so, like, I used to go home right after everything happened and no one would notice, you know. So I just blamed everyone. But then when I got to a stage where I was like, okay, now forgiveness, what does forgiveness mean? My forgiveness journey didn't just include me and my father. It included forgiving myself because Mm. I blamed myself too. It's like, Mm. why couldn't you scream? You know, why didn't you do certain things? Why didn't you tell people? How could you not know? So, and then I also was like, okay, if you couldn't know that, how would your mother would have known, you know, that this was happening to you? So, and then I forgave her. I forgave my whole family at that. So, and then, and everything just blossomed from there. Like, okay, guys, I understand that you didn't know anything, but now I, I, I also had resentment towards you guys, but I'm totally fine now. I have forgiven you. And then the relationship with my mom was like, mommy, I know you don't want us talking about this, but <laughs> it's going out. It's there. not about you now. <laughs> it's about me. Yeah. When you are ready, because I also believe that you also need your own platform to know, mm. to, you know, to teach other mothers, you know, about things maybe I don't know how you felt at that time and you know everything like that so you are going to do that on your own but for now I Mm. need to I need to do this for me and I know that you'll feel as though ah, it's maybe it's embarrassing and whatnot but trust me there are people who are going to embrace you for being the strong woman that you are and 
we hear these things every day that mothers do not believe and whatnot and whatnot. But you, you came out and you were like, not my daughter, you know, and you fought for me. So your turn will come. But for now, like Mm. we need, I need to do this. Jesus journey. And, (laughs) you know, and she held my hand, still holding my hand and supporting me all the way. And we are like best buddies. Bless Mm. her. (laughs) That is beautiful. I love a mother-daughter relationship. I think you have something powerful going there. And well done for taking your power back because I think once you can turn adversity and you use your voice to empower other people, it means your voice has power. Mm-hmm. And once your story has has gone to people and it heals them, it has power. Mm-hmm. Nobody can ever take that away from you. And I think more than anything, God knew you could handle it. You could run mm-hmm. with the story and you could really, really like this book let's just do this <laughs> like this book right here is going to heal so many girls mm-hmm. and help so many mother daughter relationships and also make people aware of some things that can happen yeah. you know we look at our fathers as protectors as somebody that can love you as somebody that's you know ordained and assigned by god to raise you very mm. well mm. and someone who has brought you to this world yes. to help you not to destroy you not yeah. to break you but be that as it may thank that's you so much for sharing is, yeah. your story um he might have taken away your innocence but he did not take away your power he did thank not take so away your much. destiny did not take away your future and I think this is part of her purpose. I really think this is part of your purpose. Zizo, we are so proud of you. Thank you for Thank being you on so I've Been Through the Most podcast Yay. and coming back to share your story. <laughs> and I know the power and impact will definitely reach the audiences. And thank you at home for watching. We really appreciate you. Make sure that you comment down below if you want to walk away with the book. We're going to be giving away two of these books um, to people who really just has to tell us why you want to get the book (laughs) and we're going to send you the book all right guys thank you for watching the show we love you please remember to subscribe on saint twins tv from myself innocent sadiki and myself melissa mashile it's bye for now